All right, let's go ahead and check on that poll that I posted last week. Hi everyone, I'm Ward and welcome to my channel Ward Draws A Lot and this week I'm going to be reading my awful comic because you guys voted yes to it. <laughs> Now, before I embarrass myself horribly, let me just put down some things to note. Number one, this will be a longer video. The reason why this will be a longer video is because of note number two is because I will be laughing a lot. Practically the entire video, I will be laughing at myself and what I wrote down. Um, so if you're, you know, not going to like that, you're going to get annoyed by me laughing. I'll just see you in the next video or never again or... I don't know. <laughs> Number three, um, I will be giving commentary in between like uh, pages or dialogue between the characters or expanding on some characters that just, you know, I made for the comic or etc, etc. And finally, this comic was made like four years ago. Please give me a break. <laughs> if you're someone who's new and you just want to like rag on me, like bro, like chill out. <laughs> I'll rag on myself first. Trust me, I'll get the first laugh before anybody. One last note is that my characters' personalities are vastly different than what I uh, put them into this comic. This comic was supposed to shed light on a lot of touchy subjects uh, later down the line, but of course, I never got that far because I was like, wow, this is so bad, why should I even bother? But yes, the comic was supposed to touch on things like uh, fat fetishism, um, the idea of wanting somebody because of the way they look or the way they act or whatever it, and eventually the comic would discuss ideas such as like you just liking somebody for themselves not for their looks or their way they act or anything of the sort so keep that in mind when i'm reading this the characters will sound like ridiculous because i wanted it to be like that it was supposed to be almost like an extreme version of acting where it looks so bad <laughs> that it did come off bad but I didn't do it properly so it just looks like a shit comic. <laughs> now with all that being said, uh, welcome to the reading of Squish by Ward Draws a lot. I have met so many girls, I've been to hundreds of parties, but no matter who comes my way I never feel interested. Wow this pose is a little rough. Okay. I'm a model, so it's not like finding girls is hard. It's finding one that I like that's the hard part. Maybe it's me. Am I judging too harshly? Is it just my taste in girls? Nikki? Huh? <laughs> okay, from here it gets a little rough. I'm very bad with dialogue. Um, as you could tell already. <laughs> but like, okay, so when I talk in real life, okay, I've, I've got very much uh, a different kind of way that I talk. Um... And <laughs> I thought the way I would type it would be like the way I talked it. So, <laughs> so you will very much see <laughs> um, the talking style of basically what is a New Yorker. <laughs> Where there's a lot of cursing in the language and a lot of, um, a lot of aggressiveness for absolutely no reason. But that's just like, it's just like how I talk. <laughs> So, so there's, there's that. <laughs> uh, side note, I do think she looks really pretty though. That green dress, dress? The green dress. Nice. The green dress looks really nice on her in my opinion. Okay, so we go back in. Nikki's like, sorry about that. She says, so are you? Am I what? Seeing someone at the moment. Oh, um, well, no, I'm not seeing anyone right now. I'm kind of taking a break from all that. Oh, uh, why not? The thought bubble of, like, you give a shit <laughs> kind of pops up and he says, Oh, just for personal reasons. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. On the bright side, we don't have to be together to hang out. And then he kind of, like, snatches his hand away and he's like, Don't ever fucking touch me. And she's like, I'm so sorry. I didn't think... It just, it gets so rough from here, guys. Like, he's so fucking mean. And I, I, I it's, it's crazy because the character himself isn't like this. And even me reading it, I'm like, this is an out-of-body experience. <laughs> Of course you think. It's just about yourself and what you want. I don't want to sleep with you. Pick another dick. <laughs> now excuse me. <laughs> the fact the fact that he said like now excuse me after is like that's insane to me because I would have just walked away. I don't know why the fuck I even put that down. She's like, now excuse me. <laughs> it's like what a douchebag thing to <laughs> say. I can't believe he just said that. He's not wrong, but oh I just wanted one night with him. 
I heard he was loose. What happened? Is it me? Okay, so let's let's come back and dissect this character for a second here. So in the story, she would have been one of the models that he had known of, but didn't know too well of. Okay, so they've probably worked on a project or two together, but he doesn't really know that much about her. Um, the thing is with uh, Nikki's background, which I've failed, as you could see, to actually elaborate on, is that he's loose, so he sleeps around with people, it doesn't matter to him. However, it's very contradictory because if he sleeps around with people but doesn't like them, does that make any sense? But everybody's different when it comes to that. My brain connects that if you were to sleep with someone, you would at least kind of like them or have some kind of connection, but some people aren't like that, so that's why his character is able to do things like that. But as of recent, he just doesn't want to go ahead and do any of that. On top of that, this uh, girl character that you see in front of you, she also has um, a problem. This is this is another thing that I discussed within the comic, or I would have discussed, is the problem of consent. So she'll go after many a person, and even if they reject her, she'll try and convince them otherwise. So I wanted to play up the idea of consent when it comes to a woman versus a man. Further in the story, it also would have um, shown that Nikki has heard these rumors, but he didn't know if he should or should not believe him, which is why he kind of reacted the way he did. He does agree that she is pretty and that he would sleep with her, but he just is not feeling her. And the reason why is because he doesn't know if these rumors are true. So as a result, it's very, it's very iffy. I don't explain any of this, which in hindsight is not good. I would have tried the method of putting it all out there first and then kind of bringing in the memories later on to kind of fill in the gaps, but I never got to that. So this is kind of where we stand on that part. Now we uh, head back to Nikki alone drinking at the bar and he says, man, I shouldn't have been so mean. I'll apologize later, but I just, I really wasn't feeling her. Her face was pretty, don't get me wrong, but it never works out with her type. I always feel unattracted to them after I sleep with them. I I don't know what I like, uh, but I do know what I don't like. I'll just figure this out later when I can think straight. So dissecting this panel as well, we see that maybe he shouldn't have been so mean because he doesn't know whether he can or cannot trust those rumors, which uh, the rumors were true, but I guess in his case, better safe than sorry. So he does agree that she is beautiful and everything, but the problem is he loses attraction after he goes ahead and sleeps with them. This is where um, we see the beginning of the idea of the fat fetishization kind of uh, coming into play. It's like he's only attracted to that one type of body type. And this kind of is very, very heavily played on within the story, right? Because the main love interest besides him, we will find later off, is Ward, who is a larger person. And uh, we discuss really deeply into that topic of like, or I would have discussed <laughs> really deeply into that topic of like, why that's not okay. And I, I love how I'm speaking in like current terms, like I'm actually doing the rest of the comic when I'm when I'm not. <laughs> so, so forgive me if it kind of sounds like weird, like why am I saying it current times when I'm not? Because uh, my brain just doesn't like to actually think. I just like to talk. <laughs> Another thing I want to mention is like, if you see weird backgrounds, which you will, 100% you will, like right here, it's because I didn't know how to draw backgrounds. Granted, I still don't, right? Not a fucking clue. But what I used to do... <laughs> to at least kind of cover my ass was I would go to like a free image website and I would look up like bar or inside of a car or whatever <laughs> like that and take the image put it onto procreate blur it up and kind of like mess around with it to where it could look like enough of a background while at the same time fitting my own style which it never did of course it never did but that's the way that I tried to <laughs> get used to it or get away with it even though it obviously looks awful <laughs> I drink way too much. Good thing I was dropped off here anyway. I'll just move her home. Of course, the next scene is him outside waiting for the mover. I'm already, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I already have tears from reading this panel alone just because, because it sounds so fucking stupid. Okay, these <laughs> two girls are walking by. He's like, ooh, look at him. He's so cute. Is he waiting for someone? And then the other person says, Oh, maybe he's thinking of someone, like, like they're trying to, like, 
make him into this like really cool guy in their heads and then like we pan over <laughs> to him and all he's saying damn some crackers would slap right now <laughs> like bro's like starving <laughs> Again, I'm just so bad with dialogue, guys. I, I really am. I've gotten way better at it, but oh man, oh man. On top of that, the the pose and the sidewalk, the, that whole the whole thing looked messed up. It's just don't even don't even bother. Don't even, it's, just, it's bad. He then goes, "Today was mentally draining. When I get home, I just want to chill for a bit." And then you hear the the little honk honk for for the Uber. He's like, "Are you Nikki?" He's like, "Yeah." He's like, oh, "I'll be your Uber driver." Again, the the free image taxi just fucking put on the painterly effect call it a day. And get in, we're gonna get the second passenger. And then Nikki's like, second passenger? Driver goes, yeah, you chose the carpool option, you can cancel if you want. And then Nikki goes, damn, no it's okay, I'll just suck it up. I'm desperate to get home and I don't want to wait any longer. Of course he gets inside the car. I think the drinks are wearing off. I hope the person I'm riding with isn't weird. The last thing I need right now is someone who recognizes me. I'll just look at my phone and try to avoid conversation. So, like we stated before, he is a model, so he is on covers of magazines and is in the forefront of media or like in a lot of campaigns for clothing. So he's very recognizable and it people have a tendency to come up to him or talk to him about it. And although he did sign up for that life, at the same time he doesn't like a lot of the attention he gets. He just usually kind of chills out and if people do recognize him, he'd rather it not be somebody who's like a little over the top you know what i mean like a crazed fan or something so it's very like i don't know bro you made the sandwich like <laughs> like he made the sandwich he knew what he was getting into when it came to that but maybe he didn't realize it would make him as famous as it actually did even then it's funny how these people don't recognize him <laughs> like the mover driver or reward so it's like what's going on here your story is inconsistent then again, there's so many cases where there was a famous person and many people just don't know they exist. Like, you could probably say famous person, I'll be like, who? And I'll look you in your face and be like, I don't know <laughs> who that is. So, I mean, like, it's possible, but yeah. Listen, I could tell you right now there are many anatomical issues <laughs> with with uh, the way he's sitting and the way this is drawn right here. Um, but the number one thing that's killing me is the neck. Why is it? Why does it look like he's like leaning back trying to look at his phone like like lift up your phone bro like something please <laughs> the Uber driver goes you ward and then she's like yes that's me uh i'll be your Uber driver hop in thank you and then nikki goes oh sounds like a girl great like being sarcastic obviously hi there how are you good you honestly i'm a bit tired but at least i go home at the end of the day same <laughs> like like could you give less of a shit for like two seconds please <laughs> Like, that's, I don't know, like, I get it, some people don't want to be talked to, but, like, damn. <laughs> like, that's just, like, it's, like, rude. <laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna ignore my texts and relax. I need a break. She seemed pretty chill. Thought she would be annoying, but I guess not. That's a nice change of pace. The clack clunk means, um, that the phone fell down <laughs> in the car. That's, that's what a phone sounds like when it hits the car floor, right? Right? Oh, his phone dropped. I don't think he even noticed. He looks tired. Um, excuse me, stranger. Hmm? Your phone dropped. You looked like you were falling asleep, so you probably didn't hear it fall. Hopefully, whenever you get home, you can get some rest. But put it in your pocket so you don't lose it. So this is my favorite um, panel in the entire comic, and it's because I used real life reference to go ahead and do this pose, and it just looks so much more appealing to the eye. And in general, the perspective is really nice as well. So it kind of gives it a nice dynamic compared to like every other panel, which I kind of uh, wish I would have done that more often was use um, more real life reference, but I didn't. So that's why you could kind of tell within a lot of the artwork that I did not use any reference. So from that first look, we can gather that Nikki says she's pretty. He's flustered. He's like, wow, he really likes the way she looks. Then he says, okay. <laughs> <laughs> can, can i have it <laughs> wow <laughs> okay wow uh ward goes ahead and says what do you mean can you have it it's your phone he cuts her off i meant your number she goes wait what he's like i would like your number if that's okay so now the defenses are up right she's like why and he's like because you're cute she goes ahead and says you're fucking with me aren't you 
I'm not falling for this joke. You can fuck right off. <laughs> and he goes, what? No, no, I'm, I'm being serious. I promise I really do want your number. Why would I be messing with you? And this is where she explains. She says, I'm being realistic here. It wouldn't be the first time I've had a good looking guy just mess with me and be an asshole. I don't want to get screwed over. And he proceeds to say, I totally understand where you're coming from, but I honestly do want to get to know you. I really do. Now, let's, uh, let's step out and comment on this. So... I wanted to make sure that I put in the idea in this comic um, of how, um, well, let's be real, how fat women are kind of made fun of, right? Um, a lot of the time, uh, an attractive person will come up to them and it'll be a joke amongst them and their friends that they're coming up to the person just to lead them on and then make them feel stupid in the end. And even if it's, um, if it's not as exaggerated as you would think in, like, media, it still does happen in real life. There were plenty of times, even growing up, I've noticed myself or other uh, larger girls who would just, uh, be the, like, the, the shit end of the joke, you know what I mean? Like, the whole, oh, my friend over there, he'd like you, and then they'll start laughing at you and everything like that, so, you know what I mean, like... It's just anything to make fun of the fat chick. <laughs> like, I wanted to make sure I put that in there and that the character herself does go through that. So she does have that defensive wall against someone who looks as handsome as he does versus her, especially because in this world and sadly in the real world, seeing a larger woman with a more attractive man is either a rare thing or something that people just can't believe like there's got to be something between the two like a deal <laughs> almost of um of why they're even together but yeah you see where i'm coming from with that idea i i almost can't believe this i want to say yes but i don't want to get played i did tell myself i want to start dating but are you sure yes i'm very sure go ahead and put your number on my phone so through uh, rethinking about this, she goes, would he really try and convince me this much if he was just messing with me? He seems genuine. She gives it a second and is like, let's give it a shot. So she goes ahead and puts her number in. Then the Uber driver comes back into play. Excuse me, Nikki and Ward, we have arrived. Have a good night. Both say their thank yous and they get out the car and they're kind of like standing in front of a house, whatever. And they're kind of just talking to each other. And let me, let me just tell you guys, these side profiles are so bad. They're so, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but they don't anatomically look correct. But like, it just looks bad. <laughs> I'm so happy I draw so much better now because it has been so long. But like, like, damn, it's bad. <laughs> so he goes, it was nice meeting you. Thanks, you too. Do you live far from here? I can walk you home. A little bit, but I'll be okay. You sure? I'm sure. Okay, then hopefully I'll see you soon. Same here. Okay, so um, what isn't described in the story, because, you know, I never got far enough with it, was that meeting him was a complete accident. She never takes the mover home. She usually takes the bus, but because she was so tired from work, she really didn't want to wait forever to get home through transit because i don't know about y'all but transit here sucks <laughs> and it would have taken like forever for her to get home so she was like you know what i'll just walk it'll be <laughs> it'll be quicker but i'll take the halfway point of the mover into that neighborhood which she had like one of those like uh discounts sent to her email you know what i'm talking about like sometimes uber will be like hey here's like a ten dollar discount for your ride you should totally use it so she was like fuck it i'll just use it so she saved it for that emergency and Boom, this is how they came together. She goes, well, I'm going to get going. See ya. And then he goes, see you. Uh, text me when you get home so I know you got there safe. See, this also had an ulterior motive to it. Um, it, Not a bad one. I don't know if ulterior motive really means like a bad motive. But anyway, he used that as like an excuse to like have her text him. So he doesn't have to initiate the conversation like he feels like she will text him. So I guess I guess he won in that aspect. He got her to do it text him i will so she's very happy about that and then he uh reciprocates that with a she smiled and he's like good so he's home 30 minutes have uh passed it's 12:03 a.m saturday okay so ward texts him i'm home but you get a text under that and it's from somebody named rose and it goes yo what are you doing and you could see the little eye emojis kind of like looking over almost to like insinuate something uh with context now rose is 
Nikki's twin brother. But the whole point was that people were supposed to read that chapter and be like, who the fuck is Rose if he's trying to talk to Ward, right? So is he playing her? Is he not? That's when we find out a chapter or two later that that is his twin brother. So people are kind of, or would kind of give a sigh of relief, like, okay, he's not a douchebag. And grabs the phone and then looks at it. Of course, he's like, she remembered, like she remembered to text me. And he's like, looking really like, uh, I guess, lovingly off into the distance where he's like, oh my gosh, she remembered. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, there's that. And that is the end of chapter one. So that was the comic, okay? We've had a lot of up and downs with it. There were some moments that could have been done better or all moments let's be real here uh the art wasn't awful but it wasn't good <laughs> the story was kind of everywhere and went too fast in certain directions and should have had more of a build-up but overall going back and reading it it's really funny <laughs> to look at just as a past thing and i enjoyed it even though you know i sat there in pain reading <laughs> but yeah thanks for watching and remember i love you bye